Hi there, Robin here, and today we are talking about Sterling's new audio interface. So not just microphones anymore, they have a new audio interface called the Harmony H224. Now this audio interface does offer two channels out to your computer plus four channels back in, and I'm gonna get into details on how that works in just a minute, but let's cover the overall numbers. So Sterling certainly didn't skip when it comes to recording quality on the actual audio interface, running it at 192 kilohertz, which is current top end standard, 24 bits using their NSX class A preamp to drive the whole system. So you're gonna get excellent quality reproduction coming in and when it's converted into digital, it's going to still sound great on your computer. So if you're looking for performance, but you're concerned about the price, don't be. Sterling is part of Guitar Center. So when you go to a Guitar Center, or if you go on to their website and you look at the product, you're gonna still see a great value when it comes to price. So let's talk about some of the things I really like about the way the unit is laid out. First of all, all steel body, which is nice. Nice trim plates at the bottom and at the top, which gives it a nice finish, but also takes off any of the sharp edges. The dials are all brushed aluminum, so that gives them a really nice smooth feel to it. So when you actually turn them up and down, they run really well. The buttons are very smooth to the touch and almost flush, which is a big deal and easy to use. So when I do actually press on the button, there's a little LED backlight telling me what this button does for me. That nice little soft click and it just happens to work no problem. These aren't analog controls. These are all digital controls because they do have multiple functions to them. Now on the back of the unit, you do have a lot of in and output options when it comes to the unit. The unit has combo jacks on the back. So both channel one and channel two on the back are built for mic and line inputs, which are gonna be for either a three pin XLR connection, or you can use a TS or a TRS. So you can have a balance or unbalanced connection on the back. On the front side is where you get to plug in your guitars. You're gonna get two quarter inch input jacks on the front. So you can choose your guitars to be on one or two. It's your option, no worries there. Now back to the actual top of the unit. As I said, there's two actual dials, one for channel one, second one for channel two and that allows you to adjust both the mic and line inputs, including, of course, the high z guitar inputs in the front. They also pack a lot of preamp capability. They'll go all the way up to 60 dB, so that's a big number, and a lot of them top off at about 45 to 50. 60 is really starting to push it when it comes to numbers overall. Now, below that, you are also gonna have your pad option, so if you're running it, if you're miking a very loud speaker, or if you've got a really strong instrument and you want, you can trim that off by just pressing these buttons here. Below that, you're going to get your high pass crossover. So it's at hundred Hertz. Anything below that gets basically peeled off. And again, I can press that button and engage that feature. So on the left side, you get meters for your channel one and channel two. And as you can tell, I'm basically all running on channel two when it comes to my microphone. So displays are color coded. So again, as we're using it and it's getting closer to zero dB, we're gonna go from a green to a yellow transition. Then on the right side, we get another set of LEDs. And this is because this unit has three different ways of actually processing the signal coming out of it. This actual dial is not an analog dial. This dial is digital and allows me to run it three different ways. So to really understand how this is working, you have to understand that you do have four channels coming back from your computer. What that means is that I have channel one, two, three, and four, and then I have options on the back side. I have monitor one and two, monitor three and four coming out of the back, four actual plugs, plus the headphone jack on the front. I'm gonna to wanna to be able to control all those individual volumes separately, and this is how they do it. They basically give you this button right here, which has a hold in brackets, and then it says, shows a picture of headphones, then it says three and four. And what's going on with that one feature alone is I'm gonna be able to cycle this. Right now, displayed on the actual audio interface is one, two, and if I press it, it's now gonna show headphones, press it again, and now it says three and four. Why am I seeing all those different numbers and configurations? Well, we'll go back to where it says one and two. When I turn this dial up, you'll see that the green lights, the lights are increasing as I turn it up. We'll get that all the way up to the top so you have an idea. Now we're at full output preamp levels for one and two. Now, if I press the button, I can go to headphones. And what we'll see here is that our headphone level is back down at the bottom because that's where we left it last. I'll bring that up to minus eight dB, which is right there. And again, if I press the button one more time, I'm now into three and four, and you'll see that we're back at the bottom. It allows me to adjust all the actual volume levels separately from the actual one control knob. 
And this button has one more feature, which is if I hold the button down for two seconds, the actual display will now say output on it. And that's saying that my channel three and four are going to be directly outputted to the headphone volume controls. So you'll see that the output is lit up here and our headphone display is lit up there. And what that means is that channel three and four coming from the computer back into the actual audio interface is now going to be going straight to the headphones. So if you're looking for a backtrack option, that's a really nice way to go. To the left of that, we have a button that allows us to basically either have our audio go direct, so mics direct to our headphones, so this way we have no delay at all, or if I hold the button down, I'll be able to have options like going between stereo and mono. So now we can run it either in stereo, so if I'm only using one channel, it will come out of both channels on my headphones, and the same thing happens if I press the button again. So this volume dial control is not just controlling the volume coming out of all my outputs. So, you know, channel one, two or three, four, or even the headphones. It also has the ability by pushing in to mute. And it does that on all the channels one at a time. So I'm not muting everything when I do this. Again, if I just choose channel three and four, I can choose to mute channel three and four. I can mute channel one and two. So if we notice on our display, we're starting to build up. So now channel one and two is muted, the headphones are muted, and channel three and four are muted. That's the mute button. Again, if I press it, one and two is no longer muted. Switch over to my headphone option, take the mute off there, switch over to three and four, and I can remove the mute there. And now the mute display will go away altogether. That's how you put so much options into an audio interface without cluttering it up with a lot of buttons and knobs. So when we're looking at the back, we're also going to notice that there's three more buttons. Button one and two are going to be for the actual line to mic options for both channels. Then we're also going to have our phantom power option. If you have an audio interface that doesn't have a button on it that allows you to switch between mic and line, that means your mics always have to be hooked up via XLR and all your line inputs, which sometimes can be complicated, always have to be connected via quarter inch. So by actually giving channel one and two its own line mic button on it, it gives you some diversity in the type of cables you can have. You're not stuck having to always have your microphones connected through an XLR cable, nor are you always stuck having to have all your line equipment plugged in via a quarter inch cable. So one of the personal things that I really like about this besides the actual overall ease of use and how the actual monitor and headphone controls work, which are really, really nice, I like how heavy it is. Amazingly enough, if you've had audio interfaces in the past or you've had certain mixers, when you start loading it up with a lot of cables, the cables start becoming heavier than the actual audio interface, and now it's very hard to position the audio interface where you want. This audio interface, on the other hand, stays perfectly still, it is very heavy. The rubber feet really make a good connection to the table surface, and with all that weight inside the unit, it's not moving around. And it's a small thing, but again, if you've had other audio interfaces, you know that that can be a crazy issue, especially if you're trying to use the dials on the actual unit or buttons. You don't want this thing moving around on you because the last thing you want to do is it not being where you left it the last time you pushed it, especially if you're playing a guitar or an instrument. So just like most brands out there, they do bundle it up with some software on it and we'll throw that up right now. I mean, me personally, because I do it this way, I just use Audacity. You're going to get comfortable with the software. You're going to stick with it because you like to use it, but you do get some free software with this as well. The unit comes included with Bitwag Studio, which is their eight track version. It's how they start you off. So basically it's a light version because it only gives you eight tracks, but it does give you all the functionality of the software included. And they also give you a 30 day access to all access pass, which is another plugin option that you can get, which gives you tons of plugin options. And you can decide if you want to keep that or not, but you do get 30 days of that free. Other things I do like about it. I like manuals. I mean, you know, read the whole manual when I actually get a unit. I read the manual before I actually plug the unit in. It is very easy to operate. I strongly do recommend you read yours if you get it. But most importantly, before you plug it in, follow the upfront instructions on how to download the driver. Nothing's worse than actually buying something brand new and getting stuck with it because you're having issues with the driver. So like anything you buy that has a USB cable that goes to your computer, always check the manufacturer's website. So in this case, you do want to go to Sterling's. You want to check the actual H224 and the downloads. Get the drivers. Order your product today. Download your drivers today. You'll be all ready for when it arrives at home. And there you go. I can talk all day about this, but I'm not going to. But I am going to say when it comes to price, you get a lot more value in the actual Sterling. Because again, Sterling, Guitar Center, 
same company, no middleman, great value. So on the next video, I'm going to actually talk about this microphone right here, which is the P30. It's a brand new microphone, again, from Sterling. It has a built-in preamp, 12 dB lifter built right in. It utilizes the phantom power from your audio interface or from your mixer to really increase the performance. It allows you to have the freedom that I have. It's a dynamic microphone, not a condenser microphone. So the normal rule that, well, if you have a dynamic microphone, you don't need phantom power unless it's active. And in this case, this is exactly what's going on here. And again, just like the audio interface, because it's Sterling, the value added built into this product, amazing. Well, I hope this video helped you out a bit when it comes to buying an audio interface and understanding Sterling a little bit better. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.